When creating a stylized VFX in 3D, it's important to understand what are the basic elements that bring it to life. In the case of a stylized energy beam effect, we have the following. The energy core and the beam make up the main body of the effect. The noise around the beam being emitted forward represents powerful energy bursting out of the core. The impact wave around the core shows how the energy core is affecting the atmosphere around it. And the particles represent broken down energy being propelled backwards and affected by the turbulent wind around it. In this tutorial video, I will be showing you how I created this energy beam effect entirely in Blender with the use of only meshes and shaders. Let's get started. The energy core is simply just a UV sphere with a subdivision modifier to smooth it out. But what makes it special, however, is its shading. In the case of this energy core, I want it to look the same no matter what angle I look at it from. And pretty much the only way I can achieve this is through a layer weight node and the shader editor. So here's how I set it up. I begin by adding a layer weight node, then I connect its facing socket into a color ramp node, which then connects into an emission node. So the layer weight node will shade your object depending on how much a surface is facing towards or away from a camera, which allows for this cool rim lighting effect, and the color ramp node will allow you to further control the blend type and intensity while coloring it at the same time, and then connect it to an emission node and you're done with the energy core. Here's the final node setup. The exact same principles apply to the energy beam, except that this time the object you'll be using is a stretched out cylinder with the exact same shader setup as the energy core with maybe just a few minor adjustments to the values, but it's still the same layer weight, color ramp, emission node setup. Here's the final node setup. The extra thing we're going to do, however, is give this energy beam an automated or procedural animation. Now, as you can see here, the energy beam seems to flicker almost, and I achieved this effect by automating its scale on the z-axis. Here's how I did it. First, select the beam object, press K, and add in a keyframe for its scale. Now, it doesn't matter what frame as long as one keyframe for its scale has been added. Then, go to the graph editor. You can get there by clicking the shortcut Ctrl plus tab in the timeline. And make sure your beam object is selected. Find the Z-Scale channel, click it, and go to its Modifiers menu tab. If you can't find that menu tab, make sure to press the N button to toggle it. Also, make sure the Z-Scale channel is selected, or it won't show. Simply give it a Noise Modifier, and voila! You got yourself an automated animation for your beam object. Now you can play with the scale, strength, and other values here to make it more or less violent. For the energy beam noise, I'll begin by explaining how it's modeled and animated, then I'll explain how it's shaded. You can begin by duplicating your energy beam cylinder object and scale it in edit mode so it's bigger than the core beam, then make sure to add in enough loop cuts across the cylinder so that there's enough geometry for smooth deformation during the animation. There's no specific amount of loop cuts, you can just eyeball it and leave it to your judgment. Then we'll begin with its first modifier, the Displace modifier. This modifier will allow us to create this turbulent shape in animation. So you begin by adding a texture which will define the shape of the turbulence. You can click on this button to go straight to your texture map. I chose to go with a Voronoi map and to be honest with you, for this effect, I haven't really touched any of the other settings on here. And at this point your mesh probably looks weird, so once you choose the Voronoi map, go back to your modifier tab and adjust the strength level of your displace modifier. Here are my values. Now that we got the shape, we want to animate it. Simply change the coordinates to object. I added an MT to my scene to drive the animation by having it selected as the object in my displace modifier. As you can see, when I move the MT, the displacement follows it. Knowing that I want the beam to be propelled forward, I created a procedural animation for the MT to move forward on the X axis and so will the displacement. Here's a quick trick for automated animation in Blender. If you type hashtag frame forward slash whatever number you type in, in any value field, Blender will automatically animate it over time. It uses the current frame number, so as you play the timeline, that value updates automatically, no keyframes needed. The higher the value of that number you write, the slower the animation will be. And the lower the value you type, the faster the animation will be. That's one way to create automated animation in Blender. With the animation completed, I moved on to shading. 
Now as you can see the basis of the shading is a mixed shader with a transparent and emission node. The transparent node will create transparency within the shader and the emission node will color what is being shown in the shader and what dictates what will be seen in the shader is right here through the factor socket. By the way, when using the EV render engine to have smooth transparency instead of something noisy, make sure to go to your material side panel in the shading tab by pressing N, go to the options menu and change the render method option from dithered to blended. Alright, so what creates these flames is this setup here. A Voronoi texture with its texture coordinates and mapping nodes connected to a color ramp node. Now what is white will be visible and what is black will be transparent. That's how that mix works. For the Voronoi node, I made sure its texture coordinates are set to UVs. Then I decided to go with the Manhattan style and with the color ramp node, I get to play with the black and white values to decide the shape and intensity of the flames. Then within the mapping node, I added an automated animation on its locations, Y axis to make sure the flames move forward. Now as you can see here, there's a sharp cutoff at the end of the mesh where the flames move. I wanted there to be a smoother cutoff, which is why I mixed a Voronoi setup with a gradient setup as such. Now there's a smoother cutoff. So I added a mixed color node and placed a Voronoi node setup at the top and this gradient node setup at the bottom. Then set the mixed color nodes blending mode to multiply and the factor to 1. With my gradient nodes color ramp, I am now able to control how soft the cutoff for my flames are. Lastly, for the color of my flames, I decided to go with a gradient color scheme. I've always thought the gradient colors is better than a single flat color. So with a color ramp node, I'm able to achieve the colors I want and how they're placed. This is the final node setup. Lastly, I added one final modifier, a simple deform modifier set to twist on the x-axis so that there's just a little twisting form on the mesh and voila, there's your burst of energy. Next, there's the impact wave effect, which is just a simple circle. That's a recurring theme with a lot of stylized VFX by the way. Most of their shapes and their meshes are very simple. The shaders will do most of the job. Its only modifier is a subdivision subsurface modifier to smooth it out. But what's special about the circle though is the way that it is UV unwrapped. Let me show you. As you can see here, I added three seams for the unwrapping. One on the outer edge, one on the inner edge, and the other on an adjacent edge connecting both edges. You'll also notice an extra loop cut close to the exterior edge, and I'll explain why it's important in just a second. The way I unwrap my circle needs to be in a square shape as you can see here. And the reason why is because when I set my texture coordinate node to UV in the shader tab, it allows the texture nodes like wave, Voronoi, noise, and so on to be spread across the geometry. Okay, here's what happens when I set the texture coordinate node to generate it. And here's what happens when I set the texture coordinate node to UV once the UV map is square shaped. I want the animated texture node to burst out of the circle, not to go across it. Anyways, moving on with the shader, same as before, we got ourselves a mixed shader node set up with a transparent and emission node. To create the impact wave effect, I began with a wave texture node and had its phase offset factor automatically animated. And here's why I added that extra loop cut. It allows that phase offset animation to slow down as it reaches the outer edge of the circle. Without it, the animation would be too linear. Then to distort that wave, I created a noise texture setup and connected it to the scale of the wave textures mapping node. Then, just like before, I mixed it with a mixed color node set to multiply to soften the edges for the animation cutoffs. This time though, I added an extra black slider sandwiching the white one because I want soft edges of transparency from both edges, in and out. Same as before as well for the coloring, I used a gradient node with a color ramp node to color the impact wave. Here is the final node setup. The only thing left is the particles being propelled backwards and as always, this can be achieved with very simple geometry. I created a circle and extruded it backwards as such. 
And by the way, feel free to model the shape in any way you want or feel is appropriate to your energy beam animation. And just like the impact wave circle before, I shaped its UVs into a square shape and headed to the shader editor. As always, I created a mix shader node with a transparent and emission node. Now to shape the particles, I created a Voronoi node setup and scaled its Y axis up on the mapping node to make the particles appear smaller. And on its color ramp node, squished the white slider as much as possible. Lastly, I automated an animation on its mapping node's x-axis location. You'll notice that same as the impact wave circle, I added an extra loop cut near the exterior edge to slow down the particle animation as it exits. If you look closely at the particle animation, there are two levels of particles. The second layer of particles is mixed in with the first one through a mixed color node set to screen. Now the setup is exactly the same as the first Voronoi node setup, except that the values have changed, mainly the scale values here. The color ramp's white slider has been altered to a lighter gray, so it's a bit more transparent than the main particles, and the x-axis animation's hashtag frame line is at a higher number than the previous layer, at 48. Don't forget that the bigger the value of that number, the slower the animation gets. The reason for the second layer of particles is to create just more depth to the effect with more details. And now, same as before, I added another mixed color node with a gradient node set up to soften the edges of the object to avoid sharp cutoffs and another gradient node connected to the emission shader to color the particles. Here is the final node setup. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you learned something from it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Bye bye.